Nice to have you with us. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Always. Uh, listen, love to just start off on, we just said, I think it's 129000 roughly, a coin average price of 30700 spent about $4 billion on it. Um, one would anticipate if the, uh, if the price stays where it is, that's going to cause a, a significant write-down overall, at least your auditors may ask for that. You know, you've talked for years about the financial flexibility owning all that Bitcoin gives you. I wonder if you believe it also works in reverse. No, I think it's been a net positive. Uh, we back tested our strategy against every other alternative. And if you roll the clock back to August 10th of 2020, when we embarked on this journey, Bitcoin's performed 10x better than anything else. Gold's down 10%, NASDAQ is flat, Bitcoin is up 86% since that time. Over any time frame, two years, four years, eight years, Bitcoin's the best performing asset. I can't come up with a better idea. You, you, you can't come up with a better idea. Does that mean that you would actually consider buying more at these prices? Yeah, um, I think uh, if you think about Bitcoin, if your time horizon is one month, it looks like a volatile risk asset. But if your time horizon is 10 years, it looks like a risk off store of value asset. So the, the crossover point is four years. Nobody's ever lost money investing in Bitcoin for four years. And if you want a surrogate for the book value of the Bitcoin network, it would be the four-year simple moving average. The simple moving average of Bitcoin over four years is about $21,685. Uh, Bitcoin's only touched that, uh, that point a couple of times in its history, and Including those have right always now. been great yeah. buying opportunities. Right, this yeah, is, right. Bitcoin's well, that, on sale. We're touching that, we're, yeah, we're touching that price right now. It's funny you should mention it. So is it a great buying opportunity? Absolutely. <laughs> Bitcoin's backed by the most powerful secure computer network in the world. If I gave you $100 billion, you can't reproduce it. And it's beyond a nation state attack or corporate attack. So once you understand that and the fact that it's a singularity, there is nothing like it in the world, then, yeah, this is an ideal entry point to get into this thing. All right. But you've also taken on debt in order to actually accrue that position, uh, which does incur a certain amount of risk, doesn't it? I mean, I know, you know, you've got, uh, you know, six in a, a 1.25 senior notes. They're, you know, 2028. Uh, you've also uh, got maturities that are out there, but there's concern in the market about margin calls, about collateral calls, certainly on some of this debt. Can you clarify for us uh, exactly what those are uh, under the covenants that you currently have and how they may impede your financial flexibility? Yeah, sure. On a multi-billion dollar balance sheet, we've only got a $200 million loan that we have to collateralize. And we're 10x over collateralized on that right now. If the market traded down by a factor of 10, we've got cash and we generate cash flow. So this has all been, the margin call thing has much ado about nothing. It's just made me Twitter famous. So I appreciate that. Uh, and the Twitter trolls love to beat up on me because it gets them engagement. As for the company's balance sheet strategy in general, we borrowed $2.2 billion at a blended interest rate of 1.8% before interest rates doubled. Junk bond index is from 426 basis points to 820 basis points. Mortgage rates have doubled. If you had a chance to grab $2 billion at 1.5% interest, it seems like a reasonable thing to do, and I'm glad we did it. Most of it is unsecured debt. You know, 1.7 billion of it is unsecured the 500 million comes due in seven years after we borrowed the money. So we feel like we have a fortress balance sheet. We're comfortable and, uh, and, and the margin loan is well managed. ...of crypto and we believe that institutions, their, their go-to, the first, is Coinbase. It's the most robust platform and uh, it's got the most liquidity on it. And so we think the scaling opportunities, given what we think is going to happen to Bitcoin. Now, as you may know, uh, Bitcoin today is around 44,000 per Bitcoin. Uh, we see that scaling to $1 million by 2030 or more uh, for all kinds of reasons, not just store of value, not just, uh, uh, not just um, uh, the, the payments, uh, cross, what do you call those? Uh, the, uh, cross border payments. Cross border yeah. payments, but remittances, remittances. Yeah, not right. just that, uh, but institutional investors, insurance policies that high net worth in individuals take out so that their wealth won't be confiscated like we're seeing more and more often these days. Uh, and, uh, you know, a substitute for money in, in, uh, in emerging markets where 
they can't trust their monetary regimes uh, or their fiscal regimes. So uh, we see a, an incredible number of use cases, and we think Bitcoin will be uh, leading the charge in many. How the economic machine works in 30 minutes. The economy works like a simple machine. Well, what we're seeing is 180 degrees different today than it was a year ago when Janet Yellen, it was roughly a year ago, Janet Yellen said, Bitcoin, environmental pro pro problems, illicit activity, money laundering, gambling, all of that. And, um, and you know, she just, no, door shut. And I remember I was asked at the time and I basically said, she hasn't studied it. She hasn't studied the technology, and she hasn't studied the instrument, the new asset class. Uh, well, it seems like she's been boning up because, again, just the other day, she, she focused on Bitcoin and crypto generally as, yeah, we, we need to make sure and encourage financial innovation. The U.S. wants to lead. Uh, just as it has with many other innovation cycles. And I said to yes. A few days ago, I presented a bet of $10,000 that Bitcoin would go under $20,000. And there are a lot of people trying to jump into the bet. So I'm going to be real clear this time. I have a $10,000 bet. Now, what does that mean? I bet that Bitcoin is going to go to twelve to ten thousand dollars within the next thirty days. Now, if you want to participate in this bet, you need to have the ten thousand dollars right now, and we need to put this in an escrow account. So when I win, I don't have to hunt you down like a dog. So anyone who wants to participate in the bet, because you know everyone's quick to like, hey, yeah, let's bet, and let's have a internet surface bet, but you don't want to put no real money up because you're scared. So that's the bet. Um, Bitcoin has gone under $20,000, just like I said it would. And this is a psychological barrier. This is the first time that Bitcoin went below its last peak of $20,000 in 2017. Bitcoin is actually below that. And this is one of the things that so many people don't understand. Bitcoin is a relatively new investment. There is no long track record. And I submit that we're in the beginning of a long-term downward market for stocks and Bitcoin based upon economic factors. Right now, the world is in a state of flux. Now, what does it mean by that? I ordered a Porsche 911 Turbo S convertible. And I wanted to get the wheels with the black. And for some reason, they're having supply chain issues. They cannot get the paint that they need to paint these wheels. So I'm going to probably have to get the wheels painted after I get the car at a local shop or something like that. So one of the things that I find to be intriguing, that I find to be fascinating, is the number of people who will come in and be a Bitcoin bull or a Bitcoin champion, and these people have not made substantial money. Now, why is that funny to me? I have a Porsche, a BMW, lived in a million dollar house, have a luxurious lifestyle, and I have people who champion Bitcoin who've not made that much money, but are surprised and shocked that I would champion a business that has put millions of dollars in my pocket. So get ready, guys. It's going to be a long, rough, and tumble ride. The dip is about to get dippier. And I'll, like, like, once again, I would advise you not to buy the dip because it's going to dip more. You know, if you want to be in the stock market or you want to buy crypto, I would sit on my cash to about the end of the year because at that point, I think a lot of the stuff will work itself through the cycle. And then the stock should bottom out. But once again, we had the Great Depression. We had 10 years where the stock market was down. You don't think that can happen again? Because of all these so-called financial experts on YouTube telling you, buy on the dip. T 
FTCA. Here's something that I, I keep saying. Anyone on YouTube that has a large following and a good sized channel is making a ton of money from YouTube. So it's like you can listen to the advice they put out or you could do what they're doing. Graham Stephan has a cash flow in business. Meet Kevin has a cash flow in business. Financial education has a cash flow in business. Andre Jack has a cash flow in business. This is one of the reasons that they can take these risky or crazy bets with their investments because if their investments go down to zero, they will be okay. But will you taking your life savings and investing it in crypto? Because th this is one of the things that just irks me. The majority of people who chime in on the comments are not getting rich from crypto. Are they making money? Yes, absolutely. They're making money. Are they getting rich? Mm -mm. Not even close. They cannot even afford to pay cash for a Honda. Yet they're all in and I, I've kind of figured it out. America has changed. America used to be the home of the curious, the brave, the innovative, the hardworking. We're no longer that country. America is home of the bra. This is someone who doesn't know how to dress properly. Someone who's consistently, you know, I actually have dress clothes. When I go out, I look completely different. And they'll do these podcasts with the, with the hat. Turn it like that. It's bro nation. It's bro nation. And these are people who are very superficial, very topical. There's no substance about them. And they're looking for the quickest way to make a buck, the easiest way to make a buck with little regard to culture. See, going back to the 1920s, up to 1960s, like Marilyn Monroe, what these people would do is they would take an average person and turn them into a star. They would change their name. They would work with their vocabulary. They would make them larger than life. They gave them culture and grooming. And that aspect of culture and grooming is completely missing from bro nation. It's like, get, you know, I, I mean, I see it every day. I see grown men, like one of the things that's very popular is the, the Yeezy slides. I actually assume there are men out there who do not own any dress shoes that you have to tie up because it's bro nation. And bro nation is one of the driving forces for this crypto conversation because for me, and I'm gonna go ahead and rework my thesis. A small business, a successful small business is the fastest pay path to wealth. And my life is proof of that thesis the things I'm able to do, the things I'm able to buy, the cash I'm able to deploy. That is proof positive of my thesis. Yet you have people who will knowingly put money in something that has a history of collapsing. It has a history of collapsing. Bitcoin could get to $5,000. I'm like, oh, well, once again, for all of you who's like, it'll never go below 20000 it went below 20,000. And I am predicting that it's going to be 12 to $10,000 within the next 30 days. Because here's one of the factors that's influencing the big sell off. Number one, a lot of the large players, like the, the first gentleman, Michael Saylor, I think he's going to trigger a margin call. If Bitcoin gets to 15K, he's going to trigger a margin call which is going to force him to dump. And then what's going to happen is another whale or two are also going to dump at the same time. And this is literally going to crash the price of Bitcoin. And then this is it's just a chain of nasty consequences because they crash the price of Bitcoin. Then the miners have to sell because they're heavily leveraged. And the miners are at a point where if it goes, there are many miners at a point where it, it's not profitable to mine Bitcoin. So you have that issue. 
So you have the heavily leveraged people who bought a lot of Bitcoin. They're going to have to sell to pay back their loans. You have the issue with the miners. And then uh, I saw someone that said they were going to buy, you know, they, they'll jump back in at 10. I don't think that's good. I feel that Bitcoin is going to go to four digits. I see Bitcoin maybe bottoming out at 7,200, maybe 5,000 before the carnage stops. And like, you want to buy on a dip? You go right ahead. Do what the fuck you want to do, a.k.a. the Hodge twins. Do what you want to do. But I guarantee you, you will live to regret it. Because what is influencing this sell-off? Real economic market forces have entered the room. People are living on savings. People don't have money. Walmart sales are down. Amazon.com sales are down. Target sales are down. Costco sales are down. Dollar General sales are up because people have deployed their cash from Walmart, Target, Costco to the dollar store. So these huge multi-billion dollar corporations have seen their sales slide. Gas is up. Rent is up. Price of food is up. There's an impending food shortage. So we're dealing with real place market forces. Bitcoin was supposed to be a hedge against inflation and it wasn't supposed to be tied to the stock market. But these real marketplace forces, because here's the thing. How did all these people get all this Bitcoin? They borrowed money, except for people who bought Bitcoin years ago. Like the people who bought four, five, six, seven thousand bitcoins when it was like 90 cents, those people will make money when Bitcoin gets to 7,200. They'll still make money. But for the folks who bought in at 15,000, for the folks who bought in at 20,000, and the folks who bought in at 30, the folks who bought in at 40,000, the folks who bought in at 50,000, if they've sold their Bitcoin, they've locked in their losses. They're locked in. And once again, there will be many of you Bitcoin bros, because with, the, with this market, uh, this is a term in the crypto community, shaking out the weak hands. There's about to become a lot of weak hands because if you bought Bitcoin at like say $2,000 and then Bitcoin crashes to 12 and then it moves to nine, at some point you think, I'm gonna take profits. So this is going to create a frenzy of selling a frenzy of selling the price is just going to go down 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 i see bitcoin at 7200 maybe 5000 i see erythium being obliterated and during this bitcoin crash cuz as bitcoin goes so does the rest of the market you're going to see a lot of cryptocurrencies go to zero right now there are people who are going to lose billions of dollars I'm not happy that people are losing money, but the writing is on the wall. Like, let me tell you how I figured out that Bitcoin was going to go into 20,000. Every morning I wake up and I check the price and Bitcoin has been deleveraging for the last two months. It was 30, 30 you know, it was between 30 and 32, 30 and 32. Then it dropped to 27 and it hung out at 27. Then it dropped to 25 and it hung out at 25. Then it dropped down to 22. It's been... That's what's called, in space terms, a decaying orbit. Bitcoin has been in a decaying orbit for months. And there's only one conclusion. Bitcoin is going down. And once again, all of these people in bro nation, these crypto bros, these crypto bulls, the pain is going to have to become so acute before they wake up. Because... Once again, I literally hear everyone's like, hey, you know, buy it, you know, buy it on a dip. You know, it's a smart investment. And this is something that isn't that old. It's not that old. It's like 12 years old. And I put in those predictions because I don't see Bitcoin being a million dollars um, in 2030. I don't even see Bitcoin like I saw many predictions that Bitcoin was going to be 100K 
three and four years ago. The closest it got was 68,000. It hung there for a hot minute, then it started to can. Elon Musk had a lot to do with that. When Elon Musk bought that $1.5 billion worth of cryptocurrency, he had a lot to do with the pump, the pump and the dump. Because uh, I've not seen him talk about Bitcoin lately. I have the feeling that he sold all his Bitcoin. And for a lot of people, that Bitcoin ploy was how Tesla made a lot of money. Because Tesla wasn't making that much money from selling cars. But once again, you see the bet. And like, don't talk about, I'll take a piece of that bet. You need to send me to Glendon at SavageFinance.org a picture of your bank account with you have the money. Because I ain't even talking to you clowns like, oh, because when, oh, and it will be a public bet. Uh, the bet, I'm going to, my name is Glendon Cameron, and I need your real name, and I'm going to announce it publicly. I'm going to announce it publicly. We're not going to do these backroom deals where I, I'm like, I'm, I'm here saying I'm going to put out $10,000 on the line. So I need your real name. We're going to do it publicly, and we're going to put the money in the escrow account. Now, the fact that I want to do it that way is going to knock out 99% of you because most of you are all in that huff and puff. And you got that higher energy under a under a avatar. No one knows who you are. No one knows who you are. But whoa, whoa, I got to give my real name and I got to give up the real cash. Nah, bruh. Nah. Because last time I did this, I was. 95% right about what was happening with Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is going to go lower. Buy on the dip if you want to. Like I said, the hodge twins. Do what the fuck you want to do. But I'm telling you, it's not a smart move. It's not a smart move to buy on the dip in the stock market. It's not a smart move. You could literally wait a few months and still be fine and get in for those real entry points. Uh, we're not at the entry points yet. We're not even close. Because Bitcoin has historically gone, and I think this is going to be the biggest crash ever of Bitcoin. The biggest crash. And once again, you're going to have the bro nation, the crypto, still pushing it because they have to push it. Because when they push it and you buy, that's when the price of Bitcoin goes up. Because in my opinion, Bitcoin is nothing but a hype machine. Just hype. There's no substance. There's no there's nothing. And I do believe that the future will be cryptocurrency. But I feel in the future we will have a government centralized cryptocurrency. And it's going to come from the United States. The United States is probably going to be the first country to put out a centralized cryptocurrency that's going to be backed by something that's going to be totally to closely tied to the dollar. So, you know, unless. The United States goes bankrupt. This crypto is not going to dissipate like a Bitcoin or a Tether or a Luna. It's not going to do that. But like I said, do what you want because that's what you're going to do. But yeah, Bitcoin is going to go lower. It is.